Beware, this podcast is not a news or journalistic source for information. This is for entertainment purposes only, with solid viewpoints from two guys that are brutally honest about the things that you all are too scared to say or discuss. Please like and subscribe to our page for more engaging content. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wits End Podcast. I'm your host, Devin, alongside my co-host, Joe, the show. And uh, today is going to be interesting. I think it's a really good conversation. Uh, It's about the Tyree Nichols outrage and what all happened down there in Memphis. Uh, So I think to kind of start this off, you know, I I just want to let it be known I don't think this was an act of racism. So, you know, if you're here for that kind of support or that line of thinking, I'm not here for it. And it's terrible what happened to him. But ultimately, this is bad cops, not racist government. So what do you think? I would disagree with that. I think there's possibly racism involved in this to a degree. I don't think it's what typical people think whenever they say racism, like, you know, white on black or or any other colors. I mean, obviously when it comes to these, this stuff, this is just a prime example of pre- police brutality, but I, I do think there is some, some level of racist involved and, and I would call it institutionalist or institutionalized or institutional racism, whatever you want to put in there. But institutional racism was what I would qualify this under if, if any. Uh, in what way, like from the police department side, as far as their approach to handling black people or or what well i don't know that i would in from what i can see on this i don't know that i would say black people in general i would say you know minorities it's kind of hard to, yeah i mean because you know as we get more in depth in this it'll come out a little bit more you know we're jumping and trying to answer a question that we've not you know talked about or elaborated on or anything like that so it's really i think kind of hard to answer that right from the jump but an institutional racism, you know, kind of by definition is, you know, in, in guess what I'm trying to say here is this, is you got this group of cops and because they're in an institution, you know, to make this simplified, they're racist towards these, you know, people of any, and I'm not just saying these people as in reference to black people in this scenario, but in that organization, they're racist towards that because they've been trained a certain way and think a certain way about the people they deal with. Okay, yeah, that so and if that's the case, maybe we need to take a step back and kind of explain a little bit of the the story as far as what we know, uh which would be five black police officers were involved in right. a beatdown of a law-abiding citizen who did nothing wrong. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that, you know, so if you kind of start from the beginning, which I know will be all over the place on this, supposedly he was reckless driving. And it was initially why they stopped him, you know, and if you look at all the footage that's out there, which we will get into, the problem of it is there's nothing that substantiates the claim that he was even reckless driving. So it would appear to be they pulled him over for no reason or their yeah. harassment. You could use whatever word you want in there, but there's nothing that they've said that so far. Now, that may come out later on, but as it stands right now, there's nothing substantiate that there's reckless driving involved. Well, and it escalated literally from the start of them pulling them over. Well, and I think that's out. why people are automatically playing the race card in this to a level because, you know, from initially and from, again, I'm going off what I've seen, not, you know, the videos and stuff like that. There was one white guy there. And so automatically people are saying it was race. It was a race thing. No, there was one freaking white cop there. And I'll tell you the kind of the back end of this too is the reason they're saying that too is because these five officers amongst others have got terminated from their job, but the white guy didn't. So automatically people are playing the race card saying he should have been terminated immediately too at the rest of them. And although I agree, you know, because again, I'll elaborate that on my opinion on the reason why, but I agree that he should have been terminated immediately with the rest of them. But however, just because there was one white guy does not make this a racial, right. a racial thing. Or, or that it's injustice, you know, like uh, they're treating different skin colors differently right now they're involved in the i mean the stuff. bottom line of it is you know people can call it how they want and i know that people are not like the things that i say but the bottom line of it is you can't play a freaking race card in here like most pe- people think why oh the white people did this to a black person or the black people did this to a white person the bottom line is this was five black cops that did this to a black guy so you can leave that crap on the table somewhere else because although we could go back into how they're trained and all this other stuff which we'll try probably touch on that as well 
But just to jump straight, this is racist. No, you can promote your damn agenda somewhere else because that's not what this is about. Now, is yeah. there institutional racism? Is there a white guy involved? Is there things? Yes, certainly. But overall, get off that bandwagon right now because that's not what this is. Uh, well, and, and that's what I was about to say. This has turned into race baiting. Uh, you know, clearly, whenever someone gets on, uh, whether it's Twitter, social media, whatever, or right. on news, and starts saying that this is racism because there's a white guy involved in mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't really correlate. Because when you watch the video, the white guy wasn't the one doing the damage. It was the black guys. Yeah. And that's totally fine. But we can't sit here and, as a country, expect to heal from any kind of wounds if all we're going to do is every time something happens is throw the race card into it and try to get people's anger to rise up. Now, I would think it was kind of interesting the fact that this weekend didn't turn out how a lot of people expected it to. Right. Uh, but thank goodness that people were reasonable uh, and not destroying the world. Well, there's a reason I take such a hard stance on on playing and, and calling it out like I did about this ain't racist. Quit going there. Don't don't get into that nonsense because it takes. I think it takes away the focus of what this was. And the bottom line of it is, is yeah, there's race. There can be race somewhat involved here and, and it may be a fraction, but the overall lining issue that is freaking obvious and that should be fought is the police brutality. Yes. And I, I would honestly say we need to be looking more into how this unit was formed. Um, right. you know, I, I, I can understand having, um, your best guys patrolling a high crime area. Uh, but that's not what this appears to be. It looks like these are under trained or no, it's not. What it is, is you have a, a, you know, and I'm not, I'm not speaking to anybody's background here, but I'm going to speak as a general rule. You have organizations like law enforcement, you know, SWAT teams and, and of the nature. And I, and I dare say SWAT, I don't really retract that. Not so much SWAT, but they inform these organizations. They're almost forming like military organizations. And the thing of it is, there's a lot of things wrong with that. One, you have people that they might be in law enforcement. That's fine. But they don't understand how a military operation works. Okay. These will never transpire and work to their benefit. The reason being is because the military is held under very, very strict guidelines. One, there's accountability for what you do. And the government has immunity or police officers have a level of immunity, which we get into. But to me, it put it point blankly, it's a bunch of damn wannabes. You're trying to form a military type organization inside a law enforcement. You have people that's not military trained for one. On top of that, they have a freaking ego because like, oh, I'm on this team. I'm on, I'm a sniper. I'm this, I'm that big deal. I mean, realistically, even in the town we live in has a sniper team. Have they ever been utilized? Maybe to a degree, but to my knowledge, they never took a shot on anybody. And I'm not saying that we don't need those type of things. However, the people that need to be in those things, once they start getting a big head, get them out. Well, and, and that's the biggest thing is having high standards for special divisions and task force. You know, I, I don't think you could become a Navy SEAL uh, without going through intense training that very few people can. And that makes you kind well, of an exceptional Well, there is. It's the lead of the lead. But the thing of it is, is, like I was saying, in the military, you follow orders. If you don't follow freaking orders and you break your chain of command in those type of things, you'll be held accountable and you will be you will face charges. You will face some type of penalty for it. These cops don't do that. You know, they might have some chain of command. They do it because they, they did it here. They just went rogue. They did their own thing. And so, yeah, I have problems with some of these little special forces units and, you know, whatever they have out here. Because I have, I have, I do believe I have a quick fix for that. Do your job as a cop. Actually be engaged with the public. Treat the public like human beings, normal people. You don't need these special units. Your cop should be doing his freaking job anyway and being attentive to this because to me, you have detectives, you have all these other, other things that's implemented in police departments as a whole sheriff's departments, you know, hire whatever. These things do not need to be implemented. They have no place in these things because these are not freaking military operations. This is, this is a local police department that has been getting, getting little oversight with too much power. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing is that's what a lot of police forces, especially in major cities are becoming is kind of like a, a military arm, um, to kind of continue whatever the city's plans are rather than being there for the people and helping the people out. They're just kind of forwarding an agenda is what it feels like. Well, no, it's not. I mean, you're, you're right on the, you know, I say it's not, and no, I agree with you because if you look at this, you look at some of the, we'll just give you a prime example that anybody can understand. You look at some of the vehicles that the cops are getting now. These are not some car. You go to the car dealership and put lights on and a siren on or whatever and make it a cop car. No, these are actually military used vehicles in some of them in combat situations that they are using and now giving them to 
law enforcement. Yeah, it, that, it doesn't make much sense. No, it you know, doesn't because a, they don't need it. Yeah, and, and it kind of leads into that, you know, ego trip. Whenever you have that kind of machinery and capabilities and equipment, you're going to use it or you're going to want to use it. Uh, and especially if you have people in those divisions, uh, I think it would suck to be, you know, part of a SWAT team that never got deployed. You know, that, that'd be pretty boring, I think, for the guys who sign up to do that job. Right. So they're expecting action. And I think the city wants to give it to them. Well, I mean, you look at the thing, you know, like I said, with the vehicles and stuff like that, they're giving them, you know, again, explain to me why, because cops can have these things. You look at the ATF and federal regulations about producing fully automatic weapons. Basically, the only way you can really legally produce them, there's some other things, but it's for law enforcement. Tell me, tell me why a cop needs a fully automatic weapon. Now, again, I understand people have them to combat these things, but really what, even if you're not even going to use that once in a lifetime, realistically, yeah. And to me, it goes back to the fundamental. And a lot of people will not even understand this, and they'll think that I'm crazy, but look it up. Whenever I was in the Marine Corps, my rifle I carried was not fully automatic. It was, it was semi-automatic and had a three-round burst. And the reason being is, the reason I say that is this, because that's a big misconception. Now, was there fully automatic weapons? Yes, there was a bunch <laughs> of them. But the ones we typically carried were not that way. The reason being I say this is because I was, it's controlled fire. You put that one shot where it needs to be. Now, I say that to say this because if these guys are running around and they're doing their job correctly, and key word here, it's training. You train, you train, you train. You don't need a fully automatic weapon. You make the first shot, one shot, and that's all you need to neutralize that situation if they're put in that environment. But how they accomplish that is you constantly train, train, train. It's not give somebody bigger vehicles, give them military-grade equipment, give them all this military-type operation. You train to do your freaking job. Well, and, and that's the half that doesn't really get talked about as much because we're always wanting to talk about the brutality side, but the lack of training is very you know, because, real. Because the cops, you you know, the reason this crap is not like this is because there's a lot of cops with freaking egos. And even in the town we live, and we have freaking response teams to crap that is unneeded. We'll waste money doing it. we we'll waste money on training. We have, we have people out here that is training a thousand yard shots right now within a sheriff's department. And I, I, I'm not trying to knock the cops. You tell me why in the hell we need cops that can take a thousand yard shot in a freaking urban terrain. You know what? I did that crap in the Marine Corps. You know what? We trained urban terrain 300 meters. You're not taking a thousand yard shot in the freaking in the middle of a city, hundred yeah. yards at best. Yeah, well, and that's the other side too. My rebuttal to having fully automatic weapon is that you're in a uh, largely populated area, and I would assume having a fully automatic weapon that it's highly doubtful that you're going to hit the target with every bullet, which means that there could be strays that kill other innocent. It's bystanders. called collateral damage. Yeah, it's so. exactly what that is, and it's going to happen. You know, and there, and you know, I hate to say that. You do look at that as basically another way you could say there's a risk reward. You know, and I'd hate to even get into that. But the thing of it is, again, if you do my method, which is you, you with controlled fire, precision shooting, you eliminate those problems because a person that is trained well can do those type of things. And what? Because you're a cop, you think you need that stuff. And I will debunk that crap really quick because I know many of men and myself that sit in a combat zone. You believe me, we were getting shot at way more than some little cop on the streets going to, and you don't see us acting that way. One shot. Yeah. Well, and I, I would also add to that, though, kind of my follow-up question would be, what kind of training do you think would be most beneficial to a cop in a major city like Chicago, Memphis now? Well, I think <laughs> there's there's a lot. You know, for one, you know, the cops will go through their, cle you know, training and stuff like that, but you know, like, well, so I'm going to go back to the military because that's what I'm familiar with yeah. most is, yeah, we have our basic training and we'll do our specialized training and whatever, you know, whatever that specific job MOS may be. But as we're do at a day-to-day -day basis, we're constantly, constantly, constantly training. Well, I'm going to understand an officer is going to be out on patrol doing stuff, but they should have more continued training all the time. So if now, if you want to ask that specific question, what do cops need in this in this specific specific situation? It's called de-escalation of force. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. That, that's a great response. Um, holding your composure, doing your job, being freaking professional at what you're doing. I wouldn't. I don't not care if that guy was a murderer. He, according to those videos, from what I've seen, had no reason to be treated that way. None. And so, yeah. So what do you, what do you do? It's, it's, and again, these cops should be familiar with my language. So if there's any out there, continuum of force, 
deadly force, there is things you have to implement and step by step by step before you ultimately take somebody's life, which is executing deadly force. That's where continuum of force comes into play. Things, steps you go to before you take somebody's life. And that wasn't done. Yeah, no, not at all. And that was actually going to be uh, something else I wanted to kind of transition into is that clearly police brutality happened in this situation. Um, but they were handled, I feel like as far as from like a city standpoint, especially in today's world, what the uh, police department did in firing the cops and charging them with second degree murder <clears throat> in less than three weeks, how much more can you ask for uh, out of a police department in it's a PR. situation it's, like this? It's PR. They, they didn't have a choice to, because personally, again, what I think happened, not again, I'll tell you what I think happened here. I think these cops... For one, from what I've seen from the videos, for those cops to act that way, they've been doing, they've done this before. Maybe not to yeah. that degree, but they've taken matters into their own hands. So to kind of piggyback off what I said a minute ago with these special units and law enforcement stuff like that, they get, they're above the law. They have not all of them, but some of them, they're above the law. So they've operate a certain way. And I know how it is because you do what you need to do to get information. And that's what they probably did most of the time. They might've beat people. They might've held them, you can call it hostage, kidnapping, whatever and do what they need to do, interrogating them to get information. They've been so used to it and not being accountable for their actions. And then they go rogue just like this because they've got this little underwritten rule between cops and other organizations too that will protect our own. Well, how the hell did that work out for you this time? Yeah, no, it, it was impossible to. There, because there's no way you could have defended this. And the law enforcement, above even me speaking about it or these other families, that you know, people's lives were taken, the cops should be speaking about this stuff to, you know, publicly because they disgraced your uniform. So you're talking about the, the five <clears throat> people that have been uh, charged in this situation or just the their police department in general? No, I'm saying police departments in general. Well, you I know, don't, don't, don't want to be like P PR stuff because cause I'll tell you, you're, and so what you understand what I don't mean by that. Police department locally released this statement uh, basically, and I'm contexting it because it's very lengthy. It basically says our cops aren't like that. We don't do this. We hold our self above the law and are not above the law, but to the law and all this other crap. Well, one people here, we live, we're several States away. Have they heard about this? Are they outraged by it? For sure. But one, um, we know that that's not true. And I'm going to tell you why it's not true. You, you want to put stuff out there like that, and you're going to say this, then why was it just a short time amount of, amount of time ago where I was actually in a podcast and I was put, told, and I called that police department out on that, on the air and said, Hey, you've got a corrupt cop down here doing stuff. How come you won't release his name? How come you won't give us this information? Well, he's basic, basically the answer to that comes down as well. He's not charged yet. He's just, he's on leave until we do an investigation. Okay. Fair. I don't agree with it because I've said before, fair, but take that same premise. How come you're so easily to point fingers at these five black guys that killed somebody when they haven't been really charged yet? They haven't been through a trial. They haven't been through jury. This is just all prelim stuff. You hypocrite. That's what that is. Yeah, clearly. And, and it's signaling, you know, that's the, the problem with <clears throat> making a social media post trying to be a justice warrior is that everyone sees through it. You know, at the end of the day, everyone should trust that you're holding yourself to the highest standard you shouldn't have to put out a statement to let everyone know hey we're doing our job over here right it's to it be doesn't expected. make sense yeah exactly like you're the cops of mm -hmm. course i expect you to do everything by the books the right way right so don't say it otherwise that makes me distrust you more i agree you know i, I 100 percent agree with that you and then know, you have examples like what you just brought up you know like how can you possibly uh, condemn cops on one hand, but then also protect other ones. They protect your own. That's what yeah. they did. Yeah. They want to basically, you know, call out this other law enforcement agency. Oh, we don't do that. We hold ourselves. Well, and, you know, and I would even say to the police department at hand, everybody down there is probably not like that. Yeah, no, you know? clearly. Now I have my opinions on some of the officers because I would vast to say a vast majority of them down there, in my opinion, for freaking being in jail too, besides just those five. Or, well, now there's more than that. There's like seven. There's some other, which we'll discuss that too. They should be too because there's not one dang cop that was on that scene that did anything about it to try to prevent it. A really a good cop in that situation, as hard as it would have been, should have unholstered his gun and pointed at them and said, you freaking put another hand on him, I'm going to shoot you. 
because that's what you would do to anybody else. If I was in a domestic and I'm beating up you, beating up you, they're going to try to neutralize the situation and apply deadly force if means to stop that from happening. But the, of course, day cops didn't do their job. And that's what I'm saying here. They could have neutralized this from that guy losing his life, taking it to where they did, but not one of those cowards stood up and did anything. Well, and that's the scary part is that as an individual, each one of them had an opportunity to say, all right, you know, we, we got him. That's enough. Or, hey, he's pretty messed up. Or how about you let EMT know whenever they get there that, you know, hey, we got into a scuffle. He's beat up pretty good. Well, that's the thing, too. But you look at this, I think it's a bigger issue than just police because there was two or three. I think it was three people, the EMT, the fire department. They let people go um, EMT or so. I'd have to look exactly what they titled it because I don't want to misquote it. But either way, the responders that came. Um, and the reason being is because they come up kind of like, yeah, put their bags down all casually. And then the next thing you know, they're sitting over there by the back of the police car, just chit chatting. They were not even looking after the guy. Yeah, it took them 20 minutes to get the stretcher out. Well, whether it was five minutes or 10 minutes or an hour it's to vital. me is, it is vital, but to me, it's irrelevant. This guy is sitting there with blood coming out of his face for what it doesn't matter that at this point they may or not have known he was beaten or whatever the case. To me, it's irrelevant. The bottom line of it is it's just like the cops. Your job is to serve and protect that EMT's job is to freaking render aid. And he didn't do it. He just sat there and like kind of assessed to drop his bag down. And then he goes over there and freaking starts chit chatting. Yeah, it, it's so the same thing applies. Do your freaking job. The craziest part to me is like all these people know they're on camera. You know, and I, at least for me, whenever I'm on camera, I try to act on my best behavior. <laughs> it doesn't always shine through, but like well, the, the fact that these people were so blatant uh, about the way they were talking about the situation, they're trying to say he was on drugs. Uh, which well, of is, course, is I mean, you know, and, and, and again, I think that there's some of that and, and people would say maybe racism, I call it profiling. And I think there's a level of people that's going to buy into that crap because he is black yep. and, you know, and I will speak up for the black community on this because it's bull crap. People will say that because they fit this context of what America thinks people look like. She's so like, well, he had to be on drugs because he's a black guy. And people can sit here and argue with that, but people believe that nonsense. Well, and the fact that he was struggling so well and was able to kind of hold his own against five guys. I, yeah, under most conditions, I think you would ask that question of, man, was he on drugs? Until you put it into context of he's literally getting beaten to death and he's trying to fight yeah, for Yeah, well, his let life. me put this into context, too. You're about you're about roughly kind of about the same size as yeah, this guy. No, I am. You front me, I'll whoop your ass. And I'll put you on the ground. I can do it by myself. And I'm not saying that to, you know, anything on air, but I'm I'm going I'm going somewhere with this and follow me. This guy's relative in five grown men, and some of them were bigger than me. You couldn't neutralize this kid. You just proved my point. You're not properly trained. Yeah. I, either that or you there was more to why you were beating this guy up than just Yeah, it's a freaking that style. is just such the biggest thing of cow is like okay you want to fight this guy five on as, one as much as i as much as i would not do this but i mean just best case or worst case scenario how you look at it do it one-on-one -on -one, you big boy do it one-on-one -on -one with a guy see how you see how you fare then not your little coward cop buddies being a bunch of pussies and having this guy's hands held behind his back at times cuffed and then kick him in the face amongst him. many other things yeah. beat him with a freaking asp a baton you know, it wasn't a baton. It was an asp, which you know, people yeah. may not know the difference. It's a freaking retractable piece of freaking metal. You know, Don't that's what good. they'd used. Yeah. You're a freaking coward. Uh, it, it's sad because at the end of the day, the thing we all have to think about is that could be your brother. That could be your father, you know, your son. And as humans, we need to be looking out for each other than more than what we're doing right now. The, problem for me is that I don't feel like in this situation going out and trying to I'm not going to say riot because I don't feel like they were doing that really that much this weekend even though there was like a little incident in New York mm -hmm. but for the most part it was peaceful protest right but I, I just don't feel like in this situation it really fits the bill because right. they did apprehend the cops they did release the video footage in a short amount of time that gave really good context and the family doesn't want to see more lives hurt, more lives lost and right. ruined because of what's already happened to their son. So I, I feel like there's got to be a better way to kind of take a more legislative. Well, actually, I only want to say legislative because I think there's already too many laws for cops to have to deal with whenever it comes to policing. So I guess what I would say ultimately is 
we got to not let this stuff bother us to the point that it has where we're trying to kill each other or radically change the system. Mm -hmm. We just need to focus on what the problem is, which is lack of training and weeding out bad cops. Right. Well, to some degree, you know, you, you kind of went there with legislation and I, and I would say that we do need it because cops have a shield and I'm not talking about their little badge. I'm talking about oh, okay. qualified immunity. They have, they have things that they can do and, and it's really screwed up. So, you know, in summarizing, it's a very big, there's a lot of things as umbrellas under there, but a cop can do stuff. Um, now, if they can show that it's unconstitutional in the law, then they can get charged with it, you know, whatever. But we'll just say something happens and it hasn't been tried and there's been no ruling on it. They automatically get a free pass. Now, so, and again, people can agree or disagree with me on this. I don't care. Cops should be held accountable for what they do and quit playing your freaking cop card, your qualified immunity, and freaking hold you accountable. You do this crap, sorry. You don't get, the, you don't get this way out because you're a cop. Because you're some federal official. It's not just cops, so people understand that. It's not just a cop thing, too. Um, you know, so they, they lose this liability. So how do you fix it? You know, one, take that away. They don't have nothing to hide behind. And then, I mean, right there, automatically, they're going to be like, you, you sue the crap out of them, too. And you're going to put them in a financial ruin. You know, and in this case, who cares? Sue them. Yeah, are you going to get much out of the freaking cop making whatever? No, you're not. But you're going to start holding them accountable because what it comes out of to right now is the government's paying for it. You win a lawsuit, the government's paying for it, and the cop never, the cops really never held accountable. Well, and by the government, you mean taxpayers? Yeah. And I, I'm, that actually kind of reminds me of exactly what Edward Snowden had said uh, in regards to the situation, which is if you actually want to fix the policing problem, then you're exactly right. Take away immunity. And then whenever you sue the cops and if you win, the damages gets pulled from their pension fund rather than from taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And if we do something like that, then cops themselves are going to clean their own act up yeah. in a very short amount of time. And I, I totally agree with that. And so, yeah, I don't think we should be passing more laws about how police uh, do interactions. But as far as how they're held accountable, yes, uh, maybe we now, maybe we do need laws right. to help out citizens to kind of get recourse and justice for corrupt cops. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a, you know, in, in a, not to make this a gun debate because that's not the issue at hand, but they're, you know, they're trying to pass a bunch of different gun laws and impose these problems on, you know, innocent people and all this other stuff. Well, the same concept to me, and I know it's a little different, but it, to me, it's the same concept applies here. You freaking take laws and you crack down on these people to make it stop. You know, quit chasing everybody else, you know, the innocent people in this. Start cracking down on the people that's freaking caused the problems. Because the bottom line of it is, this police brutality stuff, is it has. It's got way out of hand. And I would tell you, six months ago, a year ago, this is not a topic I would have probably even got on here and debated. Because right. I'd been like, well, you know, that could be racist. It might not be. I or don't know the motive. It's, it was freaking cut and dry. It's yeah. not, to me, again, I'd say it's not about racism. But it's cut and dry, regardless of their motive. There was police brutality involved in that 100%. And that's something that everybody in America should be concerned about. Whether you're black, white, green, yellow, it doesn't matter what freaking color you are, what race you are. This is police brutality. And this crap happens a lot. And well, it and, needs to freaking stop. And anymore, the, the saddest part is, I feel like as a citizen, anytime you have an interaction with the police, you, you need to have your phone on record. Yeah on this guy mm -hmm. because you don't know how he's going to react and it's crazy because even whenever you listen to him and you abide by the orders that they're giving out you can still die you can still end up really hurt in bad situations and clearly that's not a citizen problem it's the cops problem right and so if we can't even get the accountability out of them to begin with the only recourse we have is social media and kind of showing it to the rest of the world about hey you know, here's the corruption, black and white. What are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's sad. Well, it is sad. The point. thing of it is, I mean, this is in a in big, big town. You know, we live in a small town, and here's what I've seen. You know, and, I, and I'm not going to agree in great detail because I do know the person, but a corrupt judge doing stuff outside of his power. That's been proven. Yeah. Okay. A cop lying under oath, seen it firsthand. <laughs> yeah. I've seen women lie under oath firsthand. And the thing of it is, they all got away with it. Every freaking one of them. I've seen the judges personally issue um, 
um, court orders against people that were unlawful and that individual fought it and won. How do I know that? Because it was me and I will, I'm not going to run from it. The government tried imposing stuff on or the, not the government, the judges down here in, in the court we live in tried to impose a law and enforce a law on me. And I went and did my homework. It took me several months of legal research and I'm not an attorney. I'm pretty well versed with the law and I fought it and won. And I was the first person ever in this County to ever fight this and won. And the thing of it is the law that they imposed on me, they took my guns because of a protective order. It was a nonviolent protective order. It didn't even involve and So I'm clarified. It didn't involve my wife. It didn't involve my kids. I never spoke to anybody, never touched anybody. It was all basically being there and making sure I was seen. And I'm not setting that up for, you know, to bash anybody that was involved in it. That's not my purpose. The purpose of it is what I'm saying is as a byproduct that, well, the law says to take your guns. No, that's not what the law says. And I had to go to, to the, to the courthouse and school a judge and several attorneys on that. So I'm saying if it happens to me, a little nobody in a small little town, you can bet it's happening in bigger inner cities and, you know, on a bigger scale in places where there's definitely no oversight. Uh, well, and, and that's why you have things like the Innocence Project, you know, where they literally take years old case files and prove someone's innocence. Uh, because the problem with the legal system and the justice system in America today is that it's about winning. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not about what are the facts of the case. It's about we think this is the guy and this is going to help, you know, make my case for attorney general next year. Exactly. Uh, I need to win this. And same thing on the defense attorney side. You know, you want to get your client off uh, so that way you have a, a better record and you can make more money from other cases. Uh, that's not how the system was intended to be. So changing that to me, it should be just as much of a priority as policing because people go to jail for a long time and get used for free labor because of petty stuff that either never happened or they're falsely accused of, or you just shouldn't be in jail for 10 years for a bag of weed. Right. Well, and and I do say, you know, in these situations, I'm not trying to make this about racism. This does predominantly tend to happen more to black people than white. And and I'm not, you know, here's the white guy saying it, you know, but <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you know, and and it's something that, you know, and I'm not one of these guys that's going to jump on this. Oh, we need to, you know, because they're black or they're this, we, you know, the BLM. I'm not jumping on that bandwagon. I'll tell you right now, I'm not. But this crap has got out of hand. And, and that video you know, other situations, like I said, I know I'm repeating myself, but those are kind of like, eh, you know, I don't know. This is freaking blatant. Yeah, this is probably the worst video. Like, I, I'm the type of guy who likes to make jokes out of bad situations, and I, I find it hard to even be able to make a joke about anything. You, you that, can't. That I mean, I've that seen was, my share of it was. blood, guts, gore, whatever you want to call it, and I mean, that was just upsetting yeah. to me. You know, in fact, again, I'm not in one to really even act on much of that stuff besides yeah. being verbal with it. Like, it was almost like to the point I, you know, I'm like not going to just roll down there and just start causing trouble. And I mean, it was like, yeah, yeah like a yeah, part of I, me was like, say dude, if I, you're lucky, I ain't, you ain't stand in front of me with that crap. Yeah. You'd be singing a different tune, yeah. you know, and people's going to d- d- pick that video apart and well, he ran from the cops, you know, and I've already seen some people. Yeah. No crap. Look at how they were handling beforehand. You know, I, again, I look pretty, pretty well law abiding citizen minus oops. And you know, it's already just said what that was, you know, a minute ago, but you know, I mean, I, I don't see an issue with why he ran because the way he was getting manhandled, like there was, I think, three or four cops there and they could yeah. roll over, roll over, you tased <laughs> and him and, you, and you sprayed him. And see, the thing of it is even more in depth because people don't understand, I say ignorant and not in a bad way, but you're ignorant of what cops have to do. You know, before one's supposed to be, pe- be able to be use pepper spray and before one can use a taser, they have to be tased and pepper sprayed themselves. And in that training, they should be able to defend themselves and hold their composure with that happening. I know that because I've been there. I've done it. I know right. firsthand. And so those cops were trained, even if it was just one time, you know, pepper sprayed to hold your composure, to be able to defend yourself and hold these actions while you're pepper sprayed. Not you got pepper sprayed by one of your cop buddies and now you're pissed off because the unarmed man did it. Like, no, beat the crap out of the other cop that did it because he's the one that sprayed your ass. Right. Like, yeah. go get pissed at him, you know? So, you know, in this situation, you know, I don't really know that I would, you know, I'm not um, telling people to break the law and stuff like that. But, man, I, I don't have an issue with the dude running because of the way he's getting treated. Like, I, I think I he was in fear for thing. his life. Yeah. And if I was standing a, in a jury and he was on that and this is what happened, like, challenged. I would have to say, like, no, no, that yeah. guy was innocent. 
he was evading the cops because you all were freaking enforcing attacking things <laughs> um, that y'all are, can't do. And yeah, brutally attacking this guy. So no, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't try him for it. Yeah, no, dude, that, that would be, that's the one where the prosecutor just declines to prosecute. No, he doesn't well, even yeah, they just a, don't a do chance. anything. Yeah. And, and I think that, and I, you know, again, I'm not in condoning anybody to, to start problems and, and definitely, you know, not start problems at protests and stuff like this. But unfortunately in this one, I have to say this, which goes against what I believe is this something that they need to protest. They need to keep it going. This one doesn't need to be silenced. Okay. So in, in the sense of going to the streets and not necessarily yeah. that, let me clarify what I mean by that. A lot of things you'll see something very horrific, something bad happen. And within a short amount of time, and I've even said it about things, for instance, you'll see somebody, some big thing, some rapist or somebody killed somebody, murdered. Matter of fact, it happened here not too long ago. Somebody got murdered. It's a dead topic. Three weeks ago, it was the hype of the town. Now it's a dead topic. Yeah, no one cares. Because <laughs> it didn't, it, people yeah, no, didn't keep yeah, it. So what I guess what I'm saying, saying is that is, you know, you don't have to go out and protest. You don't have to do, but the momentum needs to continue in this. Not, not doing things illegal. It needs to be handled peacefully. You know, but there, and there's many ways, many, many ways to do this. And a protest is not even really what I would even say, but whatever it takes, we need to keep the momentum going in a positive direction. Right. But this stuff needs to get addressed. And will they make a law that's going to stop it? No. I think people are smart enough to realize that, but we can do things to help shrink this, minimize it. Well, and one other thing I would say, like, okay, if we were going to go down the, you know, we need to keep this momentum going side of things and continue to put pressure on the people in power. Um, my suggestion would be, you know, don't be blocking the the major roads and highways where truckers are trying to deliver, you know, materials or whatever else, or people are trying to drive to get home. Like go to the police departments, go to the government official buildings. I wouldn't say go to their homes. Cause I, I feel like at a certain point, you know, let's not just assume that all of them are super evil people, mm -hmm. uh, that they, they go home and take off their pants the same way you do and try to live a, no, a th decent that life stuff doesn't home. need to happen. Um, you know, these people have families and it's because yeah. that cop did, that doesn't mean their families like yeah, that, or their, their kids. kids like yeah. The kids right. need to see that. And so I would say, you know, go to the police departments, go to the, the Capitol buildings, whatever, and demand justice there and let your presence be felt there. Um, and even then make sure that you keep it peaceful. Uh, I, unfortunately I feel like what happens is it's almost like things like Antifa and BLM are the, uh, the chaos injection that always turns these things violent. Mm -hmm. And so the only thing I worry about and the reason why I'm always hesitant to advocate for protest is because of groups like that, that exist, that want to stay relevant. And right. so th if they can get their hands on the situation and not only they're going to get money from donations and more support, more members to, to join this cause. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for them to want to capitalize on this. But the problem is that it turns violent right. and people lose their lives. The entire point of what the movement was about gets lost. Mm -hmm. exactly. uh, and that, that's why I'm always so hesitant to, to want that. Uh, but yeah, I, I do agree. It, something needs to happen. You know, change needs to come out of this specific situation. Yeah. People need to, it, it, this is, cause this is not man. And I, and I know I'm being reiterating, but this is not a black issue. You know, it's not, it is across everywhere in America right now. I mean, other countries as well, but that's not our fight. Our fight is here and this stuff is happening at a small level, big level, you know, and people, and I'm glad there's people getting involved in this from other places, stuff like that. But you said like the guy in New York kicking in a car when, you know, cops car and bouncing on a car, like a freaking rabbit. No, you're not accomplishing anything. In fact, in my opinion, I will give you my opinion. That guy that died from this police brutality, brutality as far as I'm concerned, you're smearing his name by doing things like that. Because, you're stepping on his grave. Yeah, you have, unfortunately, there's a momentum that happened because somebody lost their life. And it's a very tragic thing that happened, you know, and I can only imagine from his parents, you know, family standpoint, you know, of losing somebody to this. The only thing they have is they can do is to use this in a positive way. And, and I think from what I've seen in interviews with her, that's exactly what his mom's doing. She wants this to go positive she, and, and use this as a platform essentially 
for change. Yeah, and, and I'm glad. And I'm glad. You know, I've listened to some of it. You know, there's a joy. I, I don't remember the technical name, but basically, I'm just going to call it a George Floyd Act. You know, I don't necessarily agree with everything in it, but I can tell you right now that. I'm not opposed to it. And even, and here we go. We could get in the debate of Republican and Democrat. Yeah, I'm Republican. I'll admit it. This is a Democratic thing. Yeah, and Republicans are and, very much. And I would say, it. you know, for the most part, I agree with it. Like, implement it because you're not doing anything right now. And, you know, the qualified immunity, yeah, get rid of it because this is, it's an easy Congress can do that. Supreme Court's whatever, you know, who, this is going to be something that can be done. I mean, the ATF can freaking come out with a law and freaking implement it and make us comply to these freaking ATF standards in 120 days. Tell me why that the United States government cannot take away qualified immunity and make it effective immediately across the board. So, And so let me finish this because qualified immunity for all you cops that want to piggyback off this crap and try to do it for PR stuff because oh, I know your agenda. I know why you're making these statements out there publicly online saying we don't stand for that. It's PR crap so your ass will get elected next go around. I know what it's all about. But if you want to put your freaking money where your math, mouth is, why don't you take qualified immunity away from yourself and your department? Why don't you make that public for everybody? Yeah, that, that wouldn't work out too well. No. They want to sit there and <laughs> piggyback off a dead man and, and the thing and what he did and it gave his life up. I say gave his life up for essentially, I'd probably I'm say martyred for, yeah. you know, whatever, went intentional. Um, on his part of what happened, but yet they're trying to piggyback off these things and put all these public statements. We don't stand for this. Like, Oh, you're such a good person. Now you've got corrupt cops in your own freaking organization and I can freaking expose them. Some of them to you. And if we even take that worse is some of your cops down there in, in these departments that don't even like the fact that you're doing that. your own cops, your own cops are coming to me. Your own cops are going to the public saying, we don't agree with our chief of police doing that. Mm. Police your own buddy. Yeah. Take away, take away some of their rights. Take away your rights, the stuff you get to hide behind on your badge every day. And then you'll sing a different tune. You know, the, the only thing I would want to push back against what you're saying about the, like, for instance, with this George Floyd bill uh, that would pass more gun reform laws or gun reform police laws um, <clears throat> is how much is enough and because uh, to me, this is my argument against things like Antifa and BLM is that I, I feel like whenever you comply and you try to do what the, the mob and, and the people are asking for, it's never enough. And so, you know, you, you start to put more and more restrictions on how cops can handle business. And as a result, they have no real tools that they can use anymore. If we continue along this model of being uh, reactionary. Do you think I care about that? And I want to tell you why I don't care about that. What do you think the government's doing to you by trying to take your guns? Exactly. That. What do you think yeah. the government's doing to you by making you freaking do these things to get money to take a vaccine? All this, <laughs> okay. I mean, the list goes on yeah. and on and on. Uh, well, You're going to conform to it, and they're going to strip away every bit of freaking power you have to just defend yourself, which right now, that's how you defend. The, 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 government, the Second Amendment, and I know this is way on a different playing field than what we're talking about. The Second Amendment was designed basically to overthrow the government if need be, Yeah, and, and the government's trying to take it. Yeah, it wasn't for protecting yourself from other citizens. It's always been tyranny of government. But, but I'll tell you, the, another reason I went down, I went down that rabbit hole for a reason. So you start taking people's guns. You start doing that. And you leave these laws in place. What do you got to defend yourself against a corrupt cop? Because as time goes, the more corrupt, if people in America keep letting this happen, it's going to require us to use firearms to defend ourselves from the corrupt crap that's going on in this world. And yes, it can get to that point. But I, I'm also, I'm, I'm not a fatalistic thinker, though. I'm kind of more of a, a empath or a opter. What's the word I'm looking for? Optimistic right. individual. So kind of how I look at it is I think that most cops that are on the job are wanting to do it professionally and to provide and take care of their community. Mm -hmm. So with that uh, intention, yeah, I don't think it's right to completely limit their ability to police us. I don't think they uh, should. I don't think we there should. There is crazy people out there that you want cops to be able to handle business and to to have a wide range of tools to be able to to take care of those situations. It's just the problem of it is, is that too many times it turns against the the people that shouldn't be policed. Well, the people, the cops, again, it goes back to the things, excuse me, the things that I said at the beginning, proper training. And that's, well, that's what it comes down to. There's all types yes, of tools. It always you is. Know, cops it always have is. tools. They have pepper spray. Do I have a problem with it? No. 
No. Do I have a problem with them, you know, having an ass baton? No. Do I have a problem with them having a gun, in fact, shooting somebody? No. no. If it warrants it, it goes back to proper training. We're not stripping away their rights. What Stripping away their cops' rights or whatever it would be in this situation, it's not their tools. It's not their tool bags. It's, it's quit giving them something to hide behind when they screw up. It's right. holding people accountable for what they do. Again, I've said this in many other episodes towards different topics, but it's this. There's different rules for different people in society, and cops are cops are right included into that. Yeah, you for have sure. the laws for me and you, and if I do something, we go to jail or we get whatever. A cop does it and say, "Oh, no, 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 he's doing his job." Yeah, well, and and that's kind of the problem is that, uh, or beyond that, you know. Whereas, if I don't testify at my trial, and you know I plead the fifth, I look guilty. Whereas if a group of cops that is involved in a situation all get up there and plead the fifth, you know, it's, oh, look at them supporting each other. You know, and the problem with that is that cops are literally the ones that are supposed to be telling you what happened, that are supposed to be gathering the evidence and presenting it to uh, the attorneys or whatever to to Mm -hmm. start prosecuting. And so if they get up there on the stand and they aren't willing to speak out against the the crime that took place you know they didn't their cop friend or whoever you know killing somebody or doing something awful that's that is where the real problem is is that if we can't hold those people accountable and make them talk Mm -hmm. yeah it might be self-incriminating but i'm sorry you were there you saw what happened someone has to to tell us what happened you look at this situation right here just at hand and another another flaw uh, uh, or not a flaw but another big thing because there's no accountability in it, that the re- police reports that the officers did involving this was basically fabricated. It was a lie. You look at the police report of what they said happened to actually what happened are two completely different things. And I'll tell you something, just like I've said with this and uh, in the way they handled it. it slide if hand. those things, uh, those police reports have been altered in this situation, you can bet that that's happened before. And you watch, mark my words on this, people. What you're going to find out is you're going to find out that this unit has probably been already questioned for either brutality or, you know, excessive force, whatever. My bet is there's already been complaints against this, against this unit that has not un- been uncovered yet. Watch, because it happens all the time. It happens, you know, it's way different ball game, like Bill Cosby. You know, something happened and one person had the balls to step up and say something and everybody come out of the woodwork. Watch what happens here. This happened. Now people's going to, now you're going to have to decipher it and see what's real or not. Yeah. But you're going to see people that's going to come up and be like, yeah. And on top of that, what you're going to see is people that's actually made complaints. They just never were addressed. So these cops have already lied. They've had a premise for it. Now here's my issue with that, because if those cops have done that and they've got away with it, that tells me they learned it from somebody up their chain of command. And number two, their chain of command has been letting them get away with it. Yeah, it, it exposes the corruption that much further. But yeah. I, I will say this. I, I don't think we're going to be able to find out too much because they disbanded them. So to me, that's almost a red flag. Like, why are you getting rid of these guys so quick? You know, because now that they're disbanded, I'm assuming you can start getting rid of some. That's political. Some of the, I mean, they had to disband it. They, they you know. Yeah, I, they did have to. Yeah. But on the other hand, I think it's because they're, like what you're saying, there's more behind just mm-hmm. this one incident. I, exactly. I do think it was probably from its inception built that mm-hmm. way. Because if they're if all they do is patrol high crime and gang related areas, let's not act like they're just yeah. I mean, let's know, just face it. This isn't Beverly Hills. There's right ways <laughs> to get information, and there's wrong ways. And I would probably tend to agree that they've probably done it wrong several times, and that's what implemented here. Um, and they again take power into their own hands. They become the judge and jury in their own hands. And that's not how this country works. And they need to be held accountable for it. And I'm glad they're doing something now. I'm not going to jump the gun and get too far down that because the trial or the actual penalty has not been put out yet. Yeah. They say, Oh, well, we're going to charge them with second degree murder and kidnapping and all this other, you know, stuff. Well, yeah, unfortunately I've seen how our, our, our system works. And I don't know. I, right now I don't have faith that this stuff is going to stick to the degree that they're pursuing. Now, and I hope I'm wrong. You know, I hope they, you know, justice is served. 
but that's just going to have to take some time to see. You know, I think a, a great social media trend would be for uh, any cops or any police department that put on their social media page something about this, uh, protesting it or, you know, saying that this is wrong. Uh, I wish we could get members of those communities to then get on that post and start listing all of the complaints and stuff that that police department's done where they've either you know, covered up actions by mm. people in that department. Because I, I kind of look at it from a police department's perspective that if you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. And clearly that's what this situation is. Right. You know, if you're going to get on there and try to uh, signal to people that you're a good person, that's whenever people start to see that you're not a good person. So I I hope something like that could take off. Well, I mean, I we th- could start it with, with, with our police department. Well, if Meta, <laughs> again, I'll say this. So everybody, I know it's going to get catched by Google because my phone and my computer is listening to it. Meta was worth a the crap. They would start censoring this stuff. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I seen a post, as dumb as this sounds, not related to this at all, but I'm using it as a context so you can understand what I'm saying. There was a post, a quote about Einstein on Facebook. It's been like the last two days. And Facebook fact-checked it and took it off because it was a misquote about something Einstein said. I'm like, really? You all are fact-checking some stupid quote by Einstein. However, you're letting all this other fake crap, again, this situation, here's where it ties. You're letting all this fake crap come through the social media and platforms, but you're not stopping that. How come they're not censoring that? How come they're not fact-checking that? Go ahead, Meta, answer for that. It, it's called keeping a narrative. <laughs> well, I mean, it is, but you know, and there's other things they're doing that crap too, which you know, that's not the purpose of this podcast to take away from the severity and the light of what's going on. But you know, we, I've proved that here in the last couple of weeks and it's hard to see for people, but there's some stuff going on with Pfizer right now. Um, basically called on the carpet with stuff and they're censoring it. Yeah. You know, no, bottom blatantly, line, I mean, blatantly. it's, it's hard to find this stuff's out there. Um, so my thing is, if they can censor that and fact check and close this stuff down, well, that's what they ought to be doing here. Oh, and speaking of Pfizer, I saw another report that they actually just received the biggest fine uh, in history for uh, illegal marketing or bad faith marketing, something along those lines. They were lying to people. Really? Uh, Go figure. And it was, I, I want to say, $2.3 billion dollars. Yeah. Well, which is I a mean, drop in the bucket for yeah, these I mean, guys. Yeah, they just make a new drug, which is what they're yeah. doing, find a new vaccine for the drug <laughs> yeah, they created. I mean, they did say it. And scare the American people into buying it like a bunch of freaking idiots, and there you go. They so, just paid your fine. So so uh, last question, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Uh, do you think there's any shot for community policing? Because this is something that I've, I've kind of been asking myself for a <clears> while. <throat> and although I think it's a great idea and concept, I just can't think of very many rational, logical ways where you could actually implement that without it turning into some type of power structure or another. Uh, yeah, I mean, like communities taking situation. care of themselves. You essentially almost would have a mafia to some level. I think. Yeah, in some way. Um, yeah. I feel like it's what it would turn into. Yeah. So I mean, and you would have sex of people where it'd be like, okay, it's, it's no different than what happened here with the cops to some level. I mean, you got these five cops, they were obviously some, you know, I band of, of tight. I, I want to say band of brothers, but you're not a band of brothers. You're a bunch of freaking, they talk like, you know, gangsters. whatever. Well, the shoe fits where it, you know, this is what it is. And they acted like gangsters. Yeah. I mean, the talk and everything behind it was unprofessional and stuff like that. The things they said, you know, yeah, I get it. You know I mean? I could go, I could yeah. believe me. I could talk yeah, about I this know, freaking could, video for <laughs> freaking four or five, six hours, uh. you know, and how jacked up it is, you know? Um, but no, I don't think that policing work in, in that policing. setting because the people would form these little groups. And if you're not in that click, you're not in that group, you're, you're, you're not cast. And so essentially, I mean, if you just policed your own, you could say, well, us five don't like you as our neighbor, so you got a choice to be to move or be dead. You know I mean? That's the yeah. extreme yeah. side. Um, I, but, you know, you can't because people will, will abuse the power. Look at the system we already have and they're abusing exactly. the power. Well, and because here's, here's the reason why I don't think community policing could actually work as a, a nationwide thing. Because I think it takes a special type of man to look for underprivileged kids in the community or families that need help and to be a guiding light for mm-hmm. them. And a, and a good example, uh, 
there's just not very many men out there in every community right. that can take on a task like that. Uh, and then beyond that, you can't incentivize them because otherwise they're going to start doing it for the wrong reasons. Right. And so it's like, you, how do you well, that's part keep of, that going? The, you know, there's, there's part of that that's the problem with this is that, you know, the, I don't know why the guys did it. You know, their, their factual motive, I mean, you know, they may or may not say it. I don't know. Um, because a lot of them have already said, well, he was reaching for my gun. He did that. Well, no shit. You got like three or four people on top of you. I don't I think he's reaching it. for your gun. He was probably just it. scrambling at anything he could yeah. leverage to not, not to use, but to just yeah, push to get away, get away, yeah. you know? And, Which is what and, and again, again, to the cops, to that law enforcement agency, to any law enforcement agency, better training. Because if your cop is worried about somebody taking their gun, that tells me you haven't trained your officers. You know, I can say that. I'll say this because they should have that thing protected. Whenever I did what I did in the military, your gun was your most vital asset. You didn't let it out of your hands. You didn't freaking let somebody else use it. You didn't hear hey, buddy hold this. It, no, no, that was your freaking tool. On top of that, the cops have duty belts and they're, you know, the holsters yeah. to prevent that type of crap from happening. But again, a well-trained person as they should be, well, that's the least of their concern. Well, he's going to grab my taser. So what? You've been tased before. Is he going to, he's only got one shot with a taser. Mm -hmm. What about the other freaking four people that were there? Yeah. That, come on. Like, be any excuse that they're bringing up is easily debunked. You know, it's just, it just, it doesn't work. So it's bananas. This, this family is going to get a, a buttload of money and, I and hope they, they deserve do. it. They deserve you know, every bit of it. It's crap that the stuff they did and, and I, and I do hope people will peacefully you know, keep the, keep this, you know, where it needs to be because this stuff has got to stop. It's ridiculous. And this is just not a Memphis thing. You know, one state thing, this is worldwide and it's not an episode to, to crap on cops. You know, it's not, but unfortunately there's people like me that you, you talked two years ago, I would have had the greatest, highest thing to say about the cops, um, the court systems and stuff like that. And honestly, I cannot say that now. I can't, I can't with all honesty to anybody listening to me can say with certainty that the um, court systems and law enforcement um, are are upholding the law and doing their part in, in uh, um, issuing the law and supporting it, whatever word you want to use there. I can't say that anymore. And if I can see it in a town of 30,000 people, man, the place 300,000, a million, I know it's messed up. I know it is. And, and, and it needs well, to change. I don't think you're alone in, in feeling that way of over the last year, maybe two years, basically since COVID, that things have changed dramatically from a government intervention standpoint. It, on both sides, people aren't satisfied. And it's kind of crazy because typically someone is getting what they want out of it. And it seems to be only people that benefit from how things currently operate. Right. So uh, great conversation.